Hi guys, it's Benji to welcome you to another Pro Cycling Manager video and on this one we are finishing the Tour de Suisse in our Pro Cyclist mode. We've got five more stages to go and that sounds about fun, doesn't it? Let's take a look at the first of the five. Oh yeah, I forgot about this stage. First of all, let's take a quick overview of the stages again. We've got the one with the mountain in the middle, the one with the two mountains with one near the end but not directly at the end, bit of a downhill section afterwards. Then we also have one with a huge brutal climb near the end the Tiefenbach Verne and the eighth stage is Schaffhausen and that is pretty much a circuit yeah it's a circuit I don't know it's a flat stage 90 kilometers not that special we finish off the Tour de Suisse with a time trial looks a bit hilly it's classified as flat don't know what to expect hope it's a bit hilly because that would benefit us I honestly don't really need to attack so I'll just stay in the peloton I am usually the guy that attacks on any opportunity, but this is just too much. There's no way I can attack with about 100 kilometers to go on this one or like with 70 to go on the next climb. This is going to be a, a sprint of a smaller group, I would guess. Not really sure whether people are still going to try and attack in these last few kilometers, but I've set up a bit of a train. I'm quite happy with how it looks. I've got Freire as lead out, Le Canf ahead of them. I don't know what the sprint of Le Canf is, so yeah, that's why I've got him on. The second spot and not the third. I think he can kind of punch, but I think that Thrailer is still a better option. His gear is running out quite quickly though, so that's not ideal. Four and a half kilometers. I think I'm... Oh, is that an attack by Stiba? It's something, all right. But it's not an attack. Getting blocked like mad. 99 hit. There we go. Honestly, there's no pace in the peloton. What if I just attack? That's an option, to be honest. Oh my goodness, really? That would be hilarious. Let's go in 87. Let's use aerodynamic positioning and at least give it a try, because why not? 16 seconds, Mez gets trying to follow. McCarthy in his wheel. We've got a kilometer and a half to go. Let's 85 it again. And it's a final kilometer, so I'm just going to go and sprint for it. We're not going to win, I think. We're not going to win. Sprinters are coming around, unfortunately. And it is... Pitcock! Holy crap! No, DeMar takes it ahead of Thomas Pitcock. And Caleb Ewan comes in fourth. We finish quite well. Right 11th. That's a good stage. We tried in the end. It just didn't work out. We out-sprinted quite a few people for the 11th place. Perfect. Anyway, doesn't matter for us because we are still up there in the yellow jersey quite safely. 19 seconds ahead of through. Honestly, I didn't expect much from the stage beforehand and it told so as well afterwards because, let's be honest, it wasn't that amazing. Now, we have upcoming amazing stages. Let us take a look. But beforehand, we have this one. Plus 8 points. We're going to level 22. Oh, and next to a skill point, we actually get to improve ourselves in attributions or potential. Like, I gotta be honest, I've never re did I did I do potential? I think I did potential once, but I gotta be real here, I just don't really care about it. We could pick up a bit more time trial because we have plus four resistance there and we can use time trial to win this to the Swiss, so I find this a good one. I'll look at the other ones as well though. Puncher, well climber doesn't do much, does it? We've got stage racer also doing actually the same or less resistance so time trial is still the worthy one and it looks like that's gonna stay the same yep pretty much let us go towards that yeah i'll just pick it time trialist we go to 76 prologue as well so that's pretty much brilliant confirm that there we go next to that we also need to spend a skill point i said it before i don't really care about the rest of these skill points too much as i feel like the upgrades that are still left aren't really that necessary. I think I will put it on willpower. I don't know. Observation maybe. No worthy aptitude for gaining information on a rider being observed during a race. Or I could get more passionate information in. I think I'll do that. Or I'll just do network. Because nobody needs network except for a rider that is looking for a team. And I am looking for a team. So... We're going to use it at the end of the month. I think that's one extra point to spend on a team to gain their interest. Don't think we'll need it anyway. On that note, 
I'm not sure if I looked at the contracts after the Giro. I think I did. Like, to be honest, for winning a Giro, not many teams are interested in me. I don't get it. It's so sad. Bahrain, I want to get you in the greens, and I sincerely hope we can do so by using our new contacts of interest. Next up is a stage from Locarno to La Punte. It is a mountain stage. We've got two major climbs in it. I'm honestly thinking that this first time is totally going to be neglected, as always. So the last time will be where it happens. Looks like it's pretty much only half the climb that matters, though. The first, well, a large part of it. I'd say the first 13 kilometers don't matter at all. It's rather like 3%. And after that, it becomes quite steep. So that's where it matters. A 14% section as well. Looks like our stage goal is to win the stage as well. So we got to watch out for that. I'm going to try and focus on leaving the brake not unhandled. So we're going to try and chase him down with one rider or something at about 60 pace throughout the whole stage and up it when the brake gets too much space. So I'll just put everybody on 85, maintain position at the front, near Froome. I'll protect myself with... I think I'll do it with... Hmm, that's a good question. Le Curve. That's good. Kevin can do it. I think his name is Kevin, at least. Kubero can start pacing at a solid 60. And I'll down myself a bit towards 75. And then my best people towards, say, 80. That is Fesson and Izagire. Perfect. That Oh, <laughs> Freil, of course. Totally forgot about one of the most important ones of them all. Definitely with this form. 77 on the day. We got an amazing form as well. 87 on the day. On paper, this is where the climb starts. Honestly, yeah, that's not, not a climb yet. Look at it. We've got about 15 kilometers before the climb actually starts. At that point, I'll try to stay near the front, not spend too much energy. I might offer someone up to get the gap towards the breakaway a bit closer, but technically I don't think we'll need that with a gap of three minutes at the moment. That should only go down from here on. Definitely with the other teams that are pacing all around. That steep section, I don't think I'll attack there yet. I think I'll use the last orange section on the climb to really go for it. Final five kilometers. We've got another downhill finish, so this is ideal for me. I'm quite good at these, and these are honestly quite easier than an uphill finish, so I sincerely hope it goes well. I've set up a bit of a small train because, honestly, I want to keep the gap to the breakaway as little as possible. I feel like we have the upper hand when it comes to me versus Froome when it comes to energy as well at the moment, so I will not complain. Just gonna make sure that I don't overdo myself. I can do super leader already. There we go. 6.5 kilometers. I think I'll go 6.85, not 65, with Freyla now and just make him kill himself for me right now. When it comes to energy, we are blatantly doing much better than Froome is. We've got energy loss on ourselves, but if you look at Froome, it's it's much more. I do think this is the perfect strategy. I think I'll try and go 99 now with Freyla as Molema is attacking. That means that Froome is a bit caught behind Molema now. And I think I can attack in a second. And it's a bit too late, I'd say. And I'll try and punch in a bit of an attack with 3k to go. We've got plenty of energy. So this should go quite perfectly. There we go. I'm going to effort cast on 85 from here on. And I'll do so with aerodynamic positioning. We've got one rider. We're actually leading the race right now. Where is Froome? He is with Higita. We've got a good two kilometers to go. I'll go 90. What is Froome's energy at? Yeah, we are better. We're going to win the stage. I can believe that right now. 1.6 to the front. Nope, 1.3 for us. That was Froome 1.6. 30 seconds on Froome. We're going up this hill like a maniac. Up this mountain, I'd say. It's not exactly a hill. And I'll use everything I have in this final section on the before the downhill because we can extend our lead before diving straight in. I think Froome just collapsed because he's on a minute now. Where is he? I can't see him yet. I want to do acrobatic descent to get a bigger lead, but he's just dying down there. A minute 20. We are winning the Tour de Swiss on the stage. I 100% believe that. It's downhill till the finish line. From here onwards. There we go. Now, can we start it already? No, it doesn't seem like it. The, it's like 8% downwards. Why can't I? Is it because my aerodynamic positioning is still on? 
I don't know. Hmm, that's a curious thing. I'm not sure why I can't use it right now. We're gonna come around the corner in a second and I'm gonna celebrate extraordinarily. There we go, and another time. There we go, twice for the fans. And can we do a third time? No, we can't, unfortunately. Let the clock tick. Froome is not there yet at all. Now he's coming, and that is 140 or something. That's bloody perfect. Here we are. It's been a while since we had a win, to be honest. I think from the second week of the Giro. No, 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 no. We won the time trial, but that doesn't really feel like a stage win, you know, because it's a time trial. I don't know why. When it comes to GC, we've brought Froome to two minutes. This is our race to lose at this point. Molema's on 249. He held on quite nicely. And he's beaten Sivakov, so he's definitely doing all right. Most likely the most interesting stage on this Tour de Suisse is this one, personally, because we've got a full-on mountain ending in Sölden. I think it's the Tiefenbach Ferne. Yeah, that's indeed the name. 160 kilometers. It's pretty much just waiting until the climb starts, so I'll skip towards the climb, I guess. The climb is starting right now. We've got the Tiefenbach Ferne, 3 kilometers of altitude. We have... Wait a second, let's go towards 68 or something. 14.7 uh, kilometers in length, 9.6 average. Now you might ask, why the hell are you setting up a train? And there's actually quite a logical reason behind that. When you have the strength as a leader and you are clearly better than everybody else in the race, that's when you can start controlling the race with your team and really abuse the train system in mountains when you are not the leader like in our Giro we were not by far the best rider in the race I feel like in mountains we sometimes weren't even the strongest but we held on and we were the most consistent and now we are clearly the best climbers so I feel like this tactic will definitely work as as you can see comparing my energy at the left bottom towards the energy of Chris Froome you can already see that mine is not as damaged here we go, the last 10 kilometers. Vincent's still ahead. Izaguirre had some trouble, so I launched his energy shell. Hopefully that he can hold on a bit longer, but I'm afraid that Vincent, Izaguirre and Ide will be roughly dead at the same moment. Then we have Freile left. If they can hold on for the next 3-4-ish kilometers, that is pretty much perfect, but let us hope that they can hang on that long. Might up it towards 85 though in the process, because we've got plenty of energy on ourselves. And Froome seems to be kind of collapsing when it comes to yellow. So that is good. Then again, I don't know his form. Plus one on the day. We're at zero, to be honest. Hmm. It's a bit annoying that our train is being messed up by nails at the moment. Douchebags. It's Froome himself that's being the douchebag here. Looks like he's quitting the race. He's just going down. <laughs> Vincent, he's pretty much done. I'm going to go 99 for your last bit of energy. Gonna do the same with... Is it worth it, to be honest with Izaguirre? He's pretty much done anyway. Might as well, might as well. And then I'll put you on 85, Ede. And you can ride for a bit more. Then we've got Freile left. Gotta keep in mind that we are spending a lot of energy now. We're still way ahead of room when it comes to energy, but... Still gotta make sure that I don't overdo myself. Only 50 people left in the peloton, but... To be honest, I felt like... They should have had... Less people in this group by now. Oh crap, I'm a bit late when it comes to swapping more right ahead. Gonna go towards... Well, I'm actually going to switch around right now. And start using him as protection. And gonna creep my way forward. We've got Molema attacking on the left. That seems to be something that Froome should really react on. I don't feel like I should. Yeah, I won't. That's not my my war. He's 2 minutes 49 behind. Froome's reacting. No, he's not. I guess I'm not doing that as well. He's got half a minute. It's not a problem of myself. 40 seconds. There we go. De La Cruz is now cleaning up the mess for Chris Froome. And Gigel on Freiler. And also the super leader thingy. We're a bit far behind in the group, I'd say. Let's try and move up a bit. Potentially on the right if possible, because the left of the road is pretty much blocked. Come on, move through, my man. I'll just move myself towards the right, come on. 
don't feel like my sneaking ability was 100% necessary there, so hence why I did not do it. There is the attack that I was waiting for. I need to get you in the wheel of... Can I not respond with... Oh my god, you cannot respond with a domestique. I'll go 99 with him then. To be able to hopefully close the gap a bit. And I'm gonna go 85 myself now. We've got more energy, so we should be fine doing so. He's gonna launch towards Molima. Energy shell on ourselves. He's kinda waiting. I've got the strength now. Hmm... The question is, can I attack away from him? Or am I spending too much energy doing so? I'm just gonna go... This might be the thing that kills us, but I don't think so. Keep on going, keep on going. One kilometer right now. Where's the 1k banner? Around this tunnel, I would guess. Which is kind of funny. Is it a bit downhill at the stop? No, it's not. It goes up till the finish line. We're gonna try and pass these guys. Simon Rekita won the stage, not ourselves, unfortunately. But we did drop pretty much everyone there. Where's Froome? Right there. And he looks to be done there, so perfect ride once again. And we extend our lead, which is bloody brilliant. To be honest, what a win for this guy from CCC. We finished sixth in the stage, but we do golden work for our beautiful yellow jersey. As you can see here, 40 seconds extra, 41 even, towards Chris Froome and Molimus pretty much out of the picture, but Froome is as well, to be honest. We've got a time trial to come as well, so we kind of got to watch out, but I feel like this race has been finished. Albeit, I would like to add to that that everything can happen still, even though we're in, way in the lead. We can still have bad luck and just crash or something and crash out or something. But if nothing happens to us mechanically or with injuries, then we should be fine. Schaffhausen to Schaffhausen, we've got... 93 kilometers of flatness, pretty much. I don't think this hill is gonna matter much. We're gonna try on it, though, because, you know, once we do everything, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but we have fun in the process. Like, a very small detail that I don't like, but most people might like, is the fact that when you finish a stage with your camera like this, then you start the next stage with your camera like this. But I don't want that. I want my camera to reset, so... Would be great if there was like a settings option or something that would be like reset your camera every stage and you could check it or something because I would have it off while other people that for example like this more would not reset it so they start in the same camera angle you know small detail that would make the game a bit better for me despite the rather weak profile I'm having severe trouble being at the front of the race I had a bit of a train, but we got totally blocked towards the back. And now we've got a 20 second gap between us and the group of the favorites. So, well, they're apparently caught. My goal is to get towards the front ASAP with it. I sincerely hope that works out now, but I'm getting blocked here and there on every single corner and the pace is not going down. We've got about 13 kilometers to get towards the front. And that hill right here might be an option to attack. So I want to get there before that happens. But it's not easy. Gotta be fair with that. Three people. Eh, Vincent, you might not be the best option for that. I hate that I can't use Freiler. Because he would be such a benefit at this point. Definitely on this stage. We're gonna fly past people on this climb, I guess. Ah, Vincent's a bit blocked by Campanats. Nonetheless, this looks very good. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. That is six kilometers to go. People are in my wheel, which is a bit annoying. Vincent can go 99 as well. He got blocked a bit as well. This is uphill again. And this is where I attack. Forgot my energy shell, but I'm still going to try and do it. We've got Campanats with us. We've got some people with us. This isn't doing what I wanted it to do, and it's totally not working. Oops. Well, I guess I'm gonna try and stop and follow Campanards then. Because he's trying something, I'm not sure what. Hmm, the pace is going down again. No one's really doing anything. I'm just gonna go, fuck it. There we go. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. That was an intermediate sprint, really? Oh, no, it wasn't. 99, 
And aerodynamic positioning. We've got someone following there. What is this? This is such a broken stage if this works. Ah, no, 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 no. 500 meters. We're gonna get caught on the line. No. Oh, fuck. Really? It was three meters. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me right now, Bauhaus? Oh, no. Oh, fuck. That's sad. That's plain sad. I can't tell you much more than that. It was so close. It hurt so much. Phil Bauhaus, we finish on the podium of this sprint. Fun. That's amazing. Nothing happens when it comes to the GC. The 10th guy is on 10 minutes. Holy crap. It's like a 5 minute gap between the 4th rider and the 5th. That's insane. There's one good part about this being the last road stage in this Tour de Swiss. That's that you can't crash or have a mechanical on a time trial. So that's the benefit of doing that in the next stage. Thing is, I do feel like time trials and team time trials should have crashes. In real life it happens, and it happens quite often if you do it in the Vuelta for example, and someone leaves their pool unwarranted, and it somewhat goes over the road. That's a possibility. Outside of that, yeah, I just feel like it needs to be in. Crashes in time trials, make it happen. The time trial is 28.2 kilometers long. It's kind of a necessary for me because we've got three minutes. I don't think Froome can take three minutes on a time trial on us. Definitely considering we have like 78 time trial. Yeah, we win the Tour de Suisse. We also need to get a top five in the stage. That's going to be doable, I think. So that's no issue. But we'll have to wait like 135 riders to get there. So I'll see you in a second. Froome is on the starting spot, that means that the next rider is us. My strategy is to start off quite high, I'd say, like 75-ish, and check if that's alright. It's okay that I have yellow left because I want to go all out on this uphill section. That will benefit us if we do that, as we can pretty much go 99 towards the top there and be almost empty at the top, because then we have a downhill section towards the finish line, so we won't spend much energy from that top onwards. That's kind of my plan. It worked in some TT with it. I think before the Giro even. I'm not sure what it was, but I enjoyed it and it worked. So let's try that again. Looks like 73 is a bit too much. Looks like I'll go 70 and see what it does at the first time check. Moving downhill towards that time check on which Dennis is first and Froome on 12 seconds. Our time will be terrible, but that is relatively planned. I have way too much yellow left, so that's on me. I will be going 80 from this point onwards and my goal is to be relatively not totally empty but like be definitely at like 10% or something yellow left at the top of this hill. I am trying some random stuff during TTs because I want to try and find the ideal way to abuse mountains and hills as a climber in time trials. So yeah, I guess we'll find that out in a second. We're on the uphill section. I can see Froome a bit ahead of me right there so I think this is gonna be a really good time at the top here we're going 80 so I think that this is exactly how I had it planned might even try and go 85 at the top here just for that last section and our time is third still 18 seconds not what I hoped for let's try and go 85 towards the bottom and it looks like Dennis is most likely gonna win the TT ahead of Froome and then me because I don't see us getting closer at this point you never know though it's like i'm spending too much energy yeah i'm not sure this was the ideal tactic we've got a bit of a flat section still to come the final two kilometers and our yellow is just dying out so hmm we'll see in a second if this was ideal there we go last bit of yellow left in the final kilometer gonna go pretty much 99 in this section for the bit of a downhill sprint and we finished third that's not ideal, but we get a podium. Nonetheless, yeah, it's not that it matters much because we're still winning the Tour de Suisse. There we go. Now Jersey is ours. The yellow one, leader in the Tour de Suisse. Another stage race written to our name. Beautiful. That's the third one, I think. In World Tour, we had UAE, we had the Giro, and we had the Tour de Suisse. Two minutes 32. Wow, that's quite a lead on Chris Froome. What is he at? He's at 82 mountains, so he's... Clearly not the best climber, but the secondaries are quite unbearable. Outside of that, the competition wasn't really that dangerous, so yeah, it's kind of expected that we were winning this. 
I do very much welcome the 73 points we get. That is very good. I like it. On that note, that was it for the Tour de Suisse and this episode. The next time we're going to take on the National Championships of Belgium. Let's take a look at the profiles because I'm quite curious. We start off with a time trial. We can do well in that, but I'm afraid that Evenepoel has 77 or 78 time trial as well. So it's going to be quite equal. We have an upper hand with a fitness peak that is still going on. So that is very beneficial. The next one is, I don't know. I feel like that's not a flat stage. I think we can work with this. This is not totally a flat stage. These hills should be enough to really open up the race as a rider. I hope that we can do something here. I feel like we should be able to. After that, we're going to simulate towards August and finish off that episode with San Sebastian. And the episode after that will be the Vuelta. Something to look forward to. Hope you liked this episode. If you did, tap that like button. I certainly did. And I guess I'll see you guys next time.